all those people, all their wealth, equals the 20 top U.S. citizens. 20 people. 20 people here, 20 people there. That seems to be the only outcome of this free trade that makes sense for some people. What doesn't make sense is why we keep voting these same folks in and keep repeating it over and over again. I believe in 2016 it's going to stop. There's an executive summary and recommendations that comes out every year to Congress um, report on U.S.-China economic and security situation. And of course, you know, this is nothing new, but they mentioned China's unfair treatment of U.S. companies exporting to or investing in China and Beijing's failure to uphold the WTO commitments continue to trouble the bilateral relationship. I'm troubled by it, but yet we continue. And this is Congress's own report. Congress needs to amend existing U.S. trade laws to address China's industrial policies, abusive legal and administrative processes, and discriminatory, discriminatory treatment of foreign investors, and to determine the consistency of these practices with China's World Trade Organization. It is the weakest, sorry Peter, most diplomatic language that you could imagine when this is a time when we need quick, harsh judgment, and we need to pull out of the WTO, and we need to get out of NAFTA and renegotiate with those countries directly on our terms that benefit our citizens. That's an applause line. Yeah, applause. So when you, and now comes the high tech part of the presentation. So when Charlie Dent gives his, gives his talking points, and he's true, he's gonna say, you know, this is our exports to China from 2006 to 2014, and they've gone up. And he's right, they have. These are the imports from China in proportion. This is the danger. But there's something more serious than just the economic aspect to this. We've got the Trans-Pacific Partnership that we're trying desperately to stop. It includes Vietnam and Malaysia which will have no value to us as consumers. It will only allow more of these horrible sweatshops to be built and to pump more goods back to us. Already I'm seeing more stuff made in Vietnam. But there's another more serious issue that doesn't get a lot of press. Because the number one culprit with this imbalance in trade is China, and they're a communist nation, and they're our adversary, it's not just economics, it's national security. Listen to some of this stuff. So this is from that same report that I had mentioned to you before. On page nine, the United States is ill-prepared to defend itself from cyber espionage when its adversary is determined, centrally coordinated, and technically sophisticated, as is the Chinese Communist Party and China's government. Page 10, the Chinese government has infiltrated a wide swath of U.S. government computer networks. The U.S. government response to the challenge has been inadequate. Page 11, China's government conducts and sponsors a massive cyber espionage operation aimed at stealing personally identifiable information and trade secrets from U.S. corporations and the U.S. government. It gets worse. On page 13, as a result of China's comprehensive and rapid military modernization, the regional balance of power between China on the one hand and the United States and its allies and associates on the other continues to shift in China's direction. China, page 14. China is pursuing a broad array of counter space capabilities and will be able to hold at risk U.S. national security satellites in every orbital regime if these capabilities become operational. They'll be able to knock out our satellites. And then finally on page 19, <coughs> China is pursuing a credible second nuclear strike capability 
with the emphasis on survivability against an adversary's first nuclear strike. That's very serious. And it's going to put China in a position of being able to threaten us in various places throughout the world. And what is very sad about that is we're funding it. Our government set up policies for us to buy cheap things in China, and this money is going there, and this is part of what it's funding. It's as if in the 1970s we were all buying things made in the Soviet Union. It doesn't make any sense. I really believe that this issue crosses over to the other side, and that patriots, Americans, not only looking for jobs here, not only looking for human rights there, or national security can come together on this issue. And Charlie Dent and I are on opposite ends. And I believe in 2016, we can win. So thank you very much. Thank you.